Good afternoon and welcome to the regularly planned uh, session of the Blendale Planning Commission for February 7, 2018. Can I have roll call, please? Planning Commissioners Astoria. Here. Lee. Here. Malukian. Here. Sakudia. Shabazi. Here. May I have a report regarding the posting of the agenda? The agenda for this meeting was posted on Wednesday, January 31st, 2018 on the bulletin board outside City Hall and on the city's website. Thank you very much. Please rise and follow in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you very much. The next order of business is the election of chairperson and uh, chairperson pro tem. Do I have any nominations, please? Chair, I'd like to make nominations. By all means. Uh, I'd like to nominate Commissioner Estorian for the chair position. Very good. Uh, do I take another nomination? Uh, you can ask if there are other nominations. Are there any other nominations? Are there any other nominations? Hearing none, then may I have a roll call, please? Uh, uh, Mr. Planning Commissioner Estorian has been named chairperson for 2018. We're, we're taking a roll call. We need to take a roll call, but okay. But thank you for your exuberance. <laughs> <laughs> Planning Commissioner Lee? Aye. Saturian? Aye. Shabazian? Aye. And Chairperson Manukian? Aye. Well, I suppose this is this. Now you get to do uh, what I thought you do it from the next time, uh, next meeting, right? Or is it this meeting? That's this yeah, meeting. From this one. Yeah. Mm, it's the transition of power is in. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take this, thank you very much. Oh. I don't know about you, I had power. <laughs> okay, so let's start with approval of the minutes. Oh, you can uh, approve um, them. Chair pro tem. Okay. So uh, are there any nominations for chair pro tem? There are, and if I may, make a suggestion. And my suggestion would be one of our two rookies, this would give them a great uh, entry in, uh, when, when and if I'm not around, that is right, right, uh, in, uh, in, in them. And uh, so any one of them, I would be okay Mr. With. Chair, may I make a nomination? Please do. How about Commissioner Sebastian? Shabazian? Sebastian. I second the motion. So we don't, we, we need a, uh, for, for time we need, we need a vote as well, right? Yes. Planning Commissioners Lee. Aye. Malukian. Aye. Saturian. Aye. And Chairperson Estorian. Aye. All right. Item number five is the approval of the minutes from December 6th and December 13th. Is there <coughs> a motion for December 6th? Or can we do both together? We can do both together. Is there a motion to approve? Yes, I make a motion to approve both. All right, we don't need a vote on this one. We just have to have a motion and a second. I second. Very good. Item number six, I don't see any oral communications cards. To number seven, there are no zoning appeals. And item number eight, there are no planning commission items or old business. Are there, is there any planning commission items? No. No. So why don't we go to new business Item number one, location 634 and 700 East Lomita Street. St. Gabriel Valley Habitat for Humanity. Who's uh, shepherding the uh, SAS? Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair, members of the Planning Commission. Uh, this uh, application was actually uh, continued from the January 17th, uh, 2018 uh, Planning Commission uh, where there was, there was no quorum, so all of these items were continued to the next regularly scheduled Planning Commission, which is tonight. Um, 700 East Lomita a, is a project that involves the development of a new affordable six unit townhouse style condominium project in two buildings on two lots uh, that total about 14,000 square feet in size, which is located in the R2215 medium density residential zone. There are 12 parking spaces provided in six individual two-car garages with direct access to each unit. 
the lot which is being developed by the San Gabriel Valley Habitat for Humanity is surrounded by multifamily uses on all sides. All six units will be affordable to low-income first-time home buyers. Some of the background on this uh, project are that variances were granted for the project for uh, three areas. Um, one was for at-grade parking uh, with reduced interior garage dimensions of 18 by 19 versus 20 by 20. Uh, interior setbacks for the building and um, the trash enclosure setback. This project has also received administrative design review approval and is currently under construction. The project site is situated um, at mid block with street access from Lomita Avenue. There are four units that directly face Lomita with the remaining two units located at the rear of the site. As I mentioned, the at-grade parking is in individual garages accessed from the driveway to the west side of the property and are tucked behind the units um, at the, for the front building and integrated into the rear building, which is screened from street view by the front building. Pedestrian access uh, to the front units is from Lomita using individual paths to each unit uh, and individual access to the rear units is through a landscaped area off uh, a common drive aisle. Common open space and landscaped open spaces are provided throughout the property. The required common open space is located at the rear of the property adjacent, uh, adjacent to the rear of the building. Each of the new residential units also has private front porches uh, and balconies that range from about 45 to 75 square feet in size. Each unit features three bedrooms in approximately 600, 1,600 square feet. The buildings will be two stories uh, at, a, at approximately 22 feet in height. Um, and in the context of the neighborhood, there's a mix of small-scale multifamily buildings, mainly comprised of one, two, and some three-story buildings in the, uh, in the vicinity. Uh, the density development of six unit is just below the maximum permitted in the R2250 zone. Seven would be permitted. Um, on this size of lot with frontage greater than 90 feet. The site is physically suitable for the proposed development. Um, it's flat and has been designed to fit within the rectangular shaped lot. It is compatible with the surrounding buildings given that the surrounding area is zoned for multifamily residential uses and all properties are currently developed with multifamily residential buildings. Uh, the development conforms to the city, city's goals for development in the neighborhood is consistent with the general plan outline uh, elements as outlined in the tables in the staff report. Uh, therefore, staff recommends that the Planning Commission approve tentative track number 74974 with the findings and conditions in the attached motion. That concludes my presentation. If there are any questions. Any questions for Ms. Dodson? Should I close <coughs> the public? Yes, it is. Close. if you have no if you have no cards, um, if there's anybody to speak, you'll want to ask if anybody's still to speak on an item. But if not, yes, you could close the public hearing and and have a, a close of public hearing and um, have deliberation. Very good. So let's start deliberation. I don't believe anybody wants to talk on this uh, on this uh, item. If anybody wants to read from Mr. Morgan, I'll support. I think it's a great project. We need um, affordable housing here uh, in the city of Glenville. Um, may <coughs> I actually make a motion, Chairperson? Or is, was there any other? Um, so I'm making a motion uh, that upon consideration of tentative track number 74974 and after reviewing the records, files, reports, and all documentary evidence submitted with regard to set tentative track, the tentative track number 749. Seven four is hereby exempt from California CEQA review as a class three exemption and approved subject to compliance with the state subdivision map act chapters 16.16 and 16.32 of title 16 of Glendale Municipal Code title 30 of the Glendale Municipal Code and the 34 additional conditions listed in the letter uh, I'm making a motion with, on that with, with conditions and findings as stated in the statute right? correct yes Excellent. Excellent. Second. Roll call, please. And you seconded. Hang on a second. Maybe th there's no further discussion, I hope, right? All right. You can't, you cannot uh, second if you're the chairman. No, I, I did. did. Oh. No, I did. I <laughs> just wanted to clarify that there were additional considerations. Planning Commissioners Lee. Aye. Manukian. Aye. Satuyan. Aye. Shabazian. Yes. Chairperson Estoy. Aye.
Item number two, 600 West Wilson Avenue. Is uh, Chris Babikian going to do this? Yeah. Is he here? Yeah. Oh, Mr. Babikian, how are you? Yeah. Setting up the board. <laughs> it's, it's been a while since we've seen you. Welcome to Big Sur. <laughs> Mr. Chair, Planning Commissioners, uh, this next item is a similar item to the prior item. It's a condominium tract uh, map that's being proposed. The, the property is located at 600 West Wilson Avenue, and the development that, uh, ha that is under construction there has received design review approval, complies with the zoning code without any variance or other exceptions, and it's a three-unit building three bedroom each with attached uh, garages, a two-story building, and the building is under construction. The proposal uh, for tonight is the, sub the airspace subdivision of the building into three condominium units. Uh, the project complies with the zoning code, <coughs> complies with all the, is consistent with all the elements of the general plan, and staff's recommendation is for the Planning Commission to approve the subdivision with the conditions that are listed in the staff report and which are also repeated in the attached motion. Um, having said this, I'd like to conclude my pre brief presentation unless there are questions from the Planning Commission. Any questions from Ms. Becky? I have one question. What is the maximum units allowed actually on this lot? Three units would be allowed, and three units were proposed and approved. Thank you. Any other questions? Now, we can go to the engineer, right? On off of the, the engineer, Mr. Mardirosius. Good afternoon, uh, Mr. Chair and uh, Commissioner. My name is Haik Mardirosius. I'm the tract engineer. First of all, uh, let me congratulate you on your uh, uh, this is a, a typical uh, uh, condo project that the, uh, received their approval uh, six, seven months ago, and they started the construction. Uh, the project is under construction right now. It's a three units with uh, 1,800 square feet of uh, uh, unit sizes. They all have three parking garages, private garages. And uh, uh, it's on great uh, project. Uh, there's not that much uh, excavation or anything done to the site. So we are in compliance with all the city zoning and uh, codes, and uh, we concur with the staff findings, and uh, they will comply with all the conditions. Is it uh, uh, still exempt from having a, a homeowners association because it's less than five units? No. Uh, that's never been, a, that's, no. It's exempt from going to Department of Real Estate to right. get their rights, but uh, they still need to get their uh, association and association. Any questions for Ms. Marjorie? Sir? No, thank you very much, sir. Thank you. All right, if, uh, is there anybody else that wants to talk about this thing? Good, so we'll close the uh, public uh, hearing side of it. And? Uh, despite the fact that uh, Mr. Marjorie did not congratulate me on a year well served, <laughs> I'm willing to make a motion. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I would move that upon consideration of the tentative staff map number 74147, and after reviewing the record, files, reports, and all the documentary evidence submitted with regard to said tentative track, that track, tentative track number 74147 is hereby exempt from CCOR review as a class three exemption and approved subject to compliance with the state subdivision map act Chapter 16.16 .16 and 16.32 of Title 16 of the Glendale Municipal Code, Title 30 of the Glendale Municipal Code, and the 32 additional conditions listed below, uh, and that we find, uh, hereby make each and all of the fo following findings which appear in the motion prepared by the staff. Is there a second? Second. Roll call, please. Planning Commissioners Lee. Aye. Manukian. Aye. Tatuyan. Aye. Shabazian. Yes. And Chairperson Astoria. Yes. Next item, item number three, location 1059 163, 
and a half. Elm Avenue. Who is, uh, 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 oh, Ms. Del Toledo. Yes, I am. Oh, you're here. <laughs> okay, very good. Please proceed. Yes, thank you. Um, as you stated, Commissioner Storian, this is case number, it's a time extension for tentative track number 63783, case number PSEB 200537. It's a request for a time extension of an approved tentative track map to subdivide a new three-story multifamily development consisting of nine condominium units over a semi-subterranean garage in the R2250 medium density residential zone. Pursuant to state law, the approval is automatically extended for 60 days upon submittal of the time extension request. Approval of the tentative track was set to expire March 13, 2016, or upon Planning Commission action. On May 4, 2016, the Planning Commission approved a two-year track map extension to expire March 13th of this year, 2018. State laws allow, excuse me, state law allows for up to six years of time extension and the applicant has already received two, two-year time extensions, so therefore they are eligible for a time extension of up to four years. So this project is not new to you. You did see this a couple of years ago. I did pin up the tentative track along with photos showing, showing the current conditions. They have been moving forward. The report does explain um, in some detail chronology of events and the letter of the applicant submitted for the time extension request and hence why they need an additional time extension. I will conclude my remarks. If you have any further questions or any, I am available. Any questions for Ms. Lillian? What's the extension for how long? They get up to four years. Well, what as are we granted? Well, he's requesting 18 months, but we'll leave it up to, it's basically up to the commission. They get up to four years. So the commission can decide if they want to grant two years. I should take that back. I believe he noted two years. Originally he mentioned 18 months. 24 months is what you mean, right? Okay, great. But you have up to, he gets up to four years. Right. Uh, well, let's, let's take a couple of baby steps first, sure. right? Uh, okay, any uh, questions for Ms. Solino? None? I have a question. Please so, um, as the chairperson was just suggesting, if they approve two years and they need more time, do they have to come back in? Yes, yes they do. Okay. Mm -hmm. And they need to file again and go through the motions. Public hearing portion is complete. Anybody wants to make a motion? Or I make a motion. Upon consideration of a time extension request for tentative track number 63783, said tentative track map is hereby approved for two years to expire on March 13, 2020. Is there a second? Second. second Very good. Roll call. Planning Commissioners Wu. Aye. Malukian. Aye. Sasulian. Aye. Yeah. Yes. Jefferson has four. Yes. Thank you. So item number four, the location is at 708 East Palmer Avenue. Tentative track map number 73049. Melka Toledo again. Yes. Hi. Okay. So this proposal is, again, tentative track 73049, PTTMCP 1727975, and the location is 708 East Palmer Avenue. The request is to sub subdivide a proposed new two-unit townhouse-style multifamily residential condominium project with on-grade parking located in the R3050 moderate density residential zone. Planning staff is recommending that the tentative track be approved subject to compliance of the, with the State Subdivision Map Act under Chapter 16.32 Final Maps and 16.16 .16 for new condominiums of Title 16 of the Glendale Municipal Code. Um, the project does highlight uh, what the surrounding use is, which is multifamily. We have R1650 across the street to the north. There is R1R Restricted Residential Zone to the south, and we have R2250 Medium Density along with R1s to the east, and the park, which is a public park, Public Park, Palmer Park, located um, directly adjacent to the property to the west, with that, which is zoned SR, and the project site is R3050, currently under construction. There is a chronology of events uh, as it relates to when the design review 
was approved and the building permits were executed along with a description of the project which again is a new two-year multifamily residential condominium project on a 9,058 square foot lot the project will consist of two residential units and they will provide townhouse style which includes two two car garages for each unit and then they have a separate detached one car garage at the rear there is all utilities are in place there is an easement flood control easement at the rear of the property so they are aware of that and they're proposing to comply with that easement I have included suggested conditions from city division so at this time I will conclude my remarks and unless you have any further questions I am available I just have a one quick question it's out of curiosity why do they have that one separate garage so what happens is for a unit that has three bedrooms it's 2.5 spaces per unit mm -hmm. which translates 2.5 times 2 5 any other questions for study? I have one uh, is in all of these developments that we hear about and come in front of us, do the storm drain maintenance, this new law and all that, is all being implemented in all of these or it all depends on which one and how? That's a good question. And I don't have... Well, let's start with this one. Does it have the storm drain maintenance? Yes, it does. Filtration and all of that. Okay, very good. All right. Uh, if there is no other questions for Ms. Toledo, I'll is the public hearing side of it? Any motions? Yes, unless, unless Mr. Margarosa wants to. I, yeah, I, I thought you you like to quit when you're ahead. Right? Yeah. Okay. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I would like to move that upon consideration of track n tentative track number 73049, and after reviewing the records, files, reports, and all documentary evidence submitted with regard to said tentative track that tentative track number 73049 is hereby oh, exempt from CQA review as a class 3 exemption and approved subject to compliance with the state subdivision map act chapter 16.16 .16 and 16.32 of title 16 of Glendale Municipal Code title 30 of the Glendale Municipal Code and the 41 additional conditions listed below and that the Planning Commission make each and all of the findings presented in the motion before us. Is there a second? I'll second that motion. Very good. There's a uh, motion a second. Roll call, please. Planning Commission, me. Aye. Manukian. Aye. Satulian. Aye. Abazian. Yes. Chairperson, abstain. Aye. Item number five, location 1315 South Glendale Avenue, use variance case. Ms. Toledo. Thank you. So this item before you is a use variance. Its location is at 1315 South Glendale Avenue. The applicant is requesting a use variance to allow a warehouse use for the purpose of storing tires operated by America's Tire. I'll give you a little background on the project. The site is approximately 6,063 square feet. It is developed with a one-story, 2,213 square foot commercial development with three on-site parking spaces located at the front of the property with access from Glendale Avenue. The last use on that particular location was an auto upholstery which is essentially a retail business prior to 2006 the property or the businesses that operated there was a vehicle auto repair and parts sales directly adjacent to the subject site is a tire store America's Tire addressed at 1327 South Glendale Avenue on the corner of Los Feliz and Glendale Avenue. America's Tire offers sales and installation of tires. The proposed warehouse will be used to store tires in conjunction with that adjacent tire store. 
In 2007, America's Tire has operated, operated their only tire store in Glendale at this location. They are proposing to continue operating the tire store. However, they need more storage space because the existing tire store on the adjacent property does not have the sufficient, well, the existing tire store doesn't have the sufficient square footage that they need to store their tires. The existing 4,028 square foot tire store has designated 1,689 square feet of, for tire storage, while the remaining 2,500 square feet is used for vehicle service bays. There's three in a customer service area and offices. The 1,689 square foot storage area is not sufficient to effectively service their customers due to the volume of customer service at this location. So what they're proposing is the existing or the subject space, which lends itself for this type of I guess, environment, if you will, to, for storage, is zoned C3. A warehouse is not allowed in the C3 zone, so therefore the variance is required. In this case, a use variance is required. The surrounding uses to the north, we have, as far as zone, it's all C3 to the north, to the south, and across the street. However, there is a CA, which is commercial auto, which is essentially commercial, but mainly for auto dealerships, um, located sort of northwest of the subject site. This prop, I, the staff is able to make the findings in a positive manner, uh, is recommending approval. The current conditions of the tire store, their operations, not proposed to change at all. The applicant is proposing to maintain the existing operation of America's Tire. They just need more storage for the tires. So there are specifications in the staff report regarding what the applicant has informed staff as it relates to loading, deliveries, and staff is recommending conditions set forth uh, so the planning commission can consider. At this point, I will conclude my remarks unless you'd like me to go over the recommended findings that staff has prepared and conditions. If not, the applicant is here and he can address the findings. I have a quick question. Um, the proposed um, the metal shed that would be removed. So what would be the use of that? Is that the little, yes. can you put it on the picture right next? They're proposing, according to the elevation, they're proposing, let me address the So that this is the existing floor plan, which I'm assuming you're referring to this. That upper corner there. This so one. it's not, the applicant has not indicated what they're going to do with that. I mean, I would have to defer to him if they're going to remove them, assuming they are according to this. Removed, yeah. And then if they're storing tires there, it's going to be an eyesore. Well, they can't. They have to. There are conditions that I've included or suggested conditions that would mitigate any outdoor storage of tires similar to a tire store. Mm -hmm. So everything, the operation of the business would have to be conducted inside. They couldn't store their tires. That would be a violation. As a matter of fact, again, that's one of the conditions that they're subject to for the operation of a tire store. And we're recommending similar conditions. Maybe applicant uh, can further explain what you know, you're planning to do for that uh, space. My name is Steve, I'm here with EI Design. Um, yeah, we're actually proposing to remove that shed area back there. And so it was never really a thought for us to store tires. It kind of just doesn't look very good. Maybe it's a little unsafe, so we were gonna go ahead and get rid of it. And just leave it and just leave it as is. And actually, you know, they haven't done a lot of looking into the total layout that's gonna happen. So first things first is to get the, the, the use changed. And then at that point, we'll go back in for like a TI permit or something like that. Okay. I'm sorry, I'm miss am I missing something here? You, you, you already have a storage of about 1,608 semi out squared. Are you talking about for the existing American right. tire? Yeah, so they're t you're talking about for their tire storage, they have a capacity of 1,800 right now. All right, 
which is pretty far below a typical store would do like 2,400. Uh, and your total. proposal is to take it up about four or 500 square feet more? Is that what, what it comes out to? No, the total would be about 3,800 square feet. The total square yard. foot for next door um, is 2,213 square feet. Um, in that, we would be able to get an, an additional 700 units. So it would be As just- As opposed to 1,680, it would be 2,400 and something, right? Or is it a separate? It would, it would be separate. It would be just an uh, entire storage facility for itself for the next door. Okay. Uh, basically, they have 16. My understanding is that the, there's about 1,600, 1,689, 1,700 square feet right now. Mm -hmm. And then there will be an additional 2,200, which will add up to 3,800 square feet of only storage facility. Correct, yeah, storage and, then and the facility metal. itself is about 4,500 square feet. Yes. Including the storage. And that's, really, that's really undersized for an America's Tire. You know, they're typical. It's like 10,190 square feet. And, you know, just due to the size of this property and everything like that, um, they've had a lot of challenges over there. So they were looking at uh, picking up this extra square footage and getting, you know, 700 uh, units is a big deal for them to get in there. Okay, very good. Thank you very much. Uh, Chairperson, I have a question from uh, the staff. That's okay. Um, I was wondering what zone our warehouse is allowed in. Industrial, which is IND. Um, there's some also in the um, IMU, IMUR. So those are the main zones where it would be allowed, but not in this case in the C3, C1, C2, CA, CR. And the second question I have is my understanding is that American Tire has been operating since. So since 2007, and at the time it was the only tire store? That's my understanding. Is that still true? To, so That's today? my understanding, according to the application. No, this is in the that only location. Tire store in, in that Glendale? location, I see. At that American tire, yeah. okay. In Glendale, is that this location? Okay, I understand. Thank you. Yeah, it's because I have seen other tire stores. I was just trying yeah. to understand it correctly. Thank you. I am, uh, any other questions for Mr. Just about They'll go through fire plan check, and at that time, fire engineering will review, or fire prevention will review the plans and issue corrections as needed to address or mitigate any po potential fire hazards. Okay, so this, this, this storage area is going to be a self-contained, blocked <coughs> off area, right? Correct. Okay. They're not proposing any aesthetic changes. They're just, according to the floor plan, they're mainly introducing racks to store tires all taking place inside the building. And, and so what you had is the non-permanent non, non part of the existing temporary metal, which they alluded that they would be taking it off. Why don't you make that part of the condition as well? Okay. Uh, this way it, uh, it will address your uh, concern, right? Thank you, Chairman. So with that addition, is, uh, are there any other questions uh, for Mr. Lee? No, I don't have any questions. All right, so public hearing portion of it is closed. Any motions? Um, I was actually just going to read a portion of the um, staff report, um, and it explained what C3 zones are, actually. And it said that the primary goal and objective of the C3 zone is to provide a full range of goods and services to the community located along the commercial uh, thoroughfare. Um, and I kind of went in, I was looking at the zoning map and trying to understand the area, and um, uh, there is a lot of uses that are similar to, to what is proposed here. Uh, it was kind of, it's kind of difficult um, to kind of just take a property and change, change the use of it because it would be um, most convenient for the project. Um, I, I see that as an issue, but at the same time, there is a lot of similar uh, projects or similar uh, uses around the area. I don't know how long the um, upholstery store has been empty, um, so maybe this will be a good change for the area, but that was something that I wanted to bring to everyone else's attention, that the C3 is normally uh, a zone, according to our municipal code, that is for goods and services, um, not necessarily a warehouse. 
Um, I am not sure how the American Tire um, Company works. I tried to look online. I understand that there are some online orders or uh, folks would go in. Grand Boulevard being closed, that might be a good location again. But um, I just wanted to bring that up. I don't know if any of other commissioners have any uh, anything they want to add to that or if they um, notice that um, you know, that is not necessarily part of the three-three zone. But that's why they're not applying for a variance. Correct, but at the same time, that variance would just, it's, it is taking away from the, the C3 commercial zone for us, for the city. Some, a commercial that, uh, a commercial use that could go there and could actually benefit the, the individuals that live in the area. They have been operating there for about 11 years and they've been doing well and we have other tire stores with a mega tire store, store, are we going to affect other uses, other tire moms and pop shops that are in the area? Is it going to affect them as they're growing in size twice as much as, or more than double the amount that they currently are, 1.5 times? So those are the things that, that, are, uh, that I'm thinking about. And, and even though the use, <coughs> you know, it's, it, it, that area, the use that they have, it go, falls within, but there's so much other consequences that might, um, so specific to this case, because you know, uh, we're not addressing a general use guideline for a zoning order or what have you, mm -hmm. but specific to this case, they're applying for variance, which is well afforded in our codes, in our, in our uh, ordinances, and it's up to us to make the findings and approve it or not. Of course. It is okay if it's a C2 or C2, I mean, it, 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 depending who and when, anybody can apply for a variance. If we make the findings, we'll grant it. If we don't, we don't. So. And one point I'd like to make is my um, legal team has indicated the variance runs with the use. So once that use goes away, and that's how we kind of crafted the findings and the conditions, once the use goes away, this use variance goes away as well. Right. And it doesn't necessarily mean tie American Tire. The use meaning any tire store. Any tire store, yeah. correct. Yeah. All right. Uh, any other questions for Mr. Leader? Is there a motion? Uh, before we do that, if, if I could have one point of clarification on the planning commission for that additional condition. I just want to read it to the record and make sure everyone's on the same page um, that the unpermitted existing temporary metal roof shed in the rear, as noted on the plan, be removed prior to the time. I'm ready to make the motion. Please do. Upon review and consideration of all materials and exhibits of a current record relative to variance case number PVAR 1723702, located at 1315 South Glendale Avenue, and after having conducted a public hearing on said matter, that the Planning Commission hereby approves the variance PVAR 1723702 in accord with the findings and conditions set forth below, uh, A through D, and 14 conditions, and with that additional 15th condition uh, referring to the uh, existing uh, unpermitted building. Is there a second? Second. Very good. Roll call. Planning Commissioners Lee. Aye. Malukian. Aye. Satirian. Aye. Shabazian. No. Chairperson Esco. Yes. Very good. Item number nine, community development department updates. This yes, I just want to point out that we will not have a planning commission meeting on February 21st. This is on, um, and that the South Lindell Community Plan is available online for anybody who wishes to read it. We also have the draft environmental impact report for the South Lindell Community Plan. That's also available online. It's out for public review right now. Public comment period is open until uh, 5.30 p.m. on Monday, March 12th. So everyone is encouraged to take a look at it and read it and submit comments. We have a comment form that is online that um, anybody can submit electronically. And then we're also gonna have a special meeting of the Planning Commission and Transportation and Parking Commission on March 7th, Wednesday, March 7th. It would be a regular meeting date for you, but because we're gonna have a joint meeting. It makes it a special meeting. It'll start at five o'clock, just as our regular meeting, your regular meeting does. 
I want to make the public aware of that because um, anybody who wishes to make an oral comment concerning the EIR, they're welcome to come to that meeting. That would be the appropriate time to do that if they don't want to submit a written comment. Um, and then we're asking that uh, the Planning Commission consider to reserve a time on May 30th, a Wednesday, it would be the fifth Wednesday in May, aside uh, for a special meeting of the Planning Commission to consider the South Glendale Community Plan. Right now that's a tentative date. We don't know when we'll have a final EIR completed, um, but we're reserving that date in the hopes that we will have a final EIR done by that time. And so that concludes uh, staff's comments. Very good, thank you. Any comments from the commissioners? Please go ahead. Yeah, kudos to a uh, wonderful job that was done by our former chairman, uh, Commissioner Manukian. Thank you very much for your service. And congratulations, Commissioner Astorian. We're looking forward to working with you for the rest of the year, hopefully. I second that. <laughs> Adjournment. We are so moved.